Hello everybody and welcome to today's tutorial. My name is Shidi Bere. In today's tutorial, we'll be looking at how to integrate our, our Paystack payment system into our Flutter application. And the particular payment type we will be looking at is how to uh, integrate subscription payment. A situation where you uh, a, a user subscribes to a, a particular payment amount and uh, payment interval and automatically the system charges that user on that particular day. So for this project, um, I've gone ahead to create my new uh, project, which I call Paystack subscription over here. And I've gone ahead to clear most of the uh, boilerplate uh, code inside just to make it look cleaner. And uh, this is what I have currently. So with this, it should be good to go. Um, let's let's do let's just tidy this up a little, and yeah, there we go. So this is what I have, and for this particular uh, tutorial, we'll be using uh, two uh, plugins, uh, Flutter plugins, which are WebView Flutter and HTTP. So for you to get this particular uh, plugins, go over to pop.dev and type uh, WebView Flutter and then click on enter. It will show you this, open it. This is the particular version and it's the same thing as the version as, uh, same as the version I'm using, which is uh, 3.0 point this. So what you do is go over to this place, go to installing and then copy this come over to your project and paste it here make sure it aligns under the compartino icon or above it but make sure it's on the same line then another one which you need to do is to get the uh, flutter http package uh, package not plugin sorry uh, http package this is it here so I'm using the latest one. It was updated five months ago, and uh, the version is so. Oh, I'm using. I'm not even using the latest one. Zero point thirteen point four. So you copy this, copy this, and uh, uh, why is this thing shaking? Okay, copy this go over to your project and paste it. So once done, you can click on. Pop get to get the uh, what's it called and then uh, to get the packages and then come over to your uh, main page. So the things which you are going to import is import this package, the Flutter WebView package, the asynchronous package, that async package, and that IO package. So make sure you have this imported. I just imported it just to make things easier uh, for me. So right now um, we have this running. One of the items which we will need is the URL to our um, Paystack uh, subscription page. So go over to Paystack. Uh, for you to be able to achieve this uh, particular tutorial or follow along with this particular tutorial, you need to have a Paystack account. So uh, go over to Paystack and not only a Paystack account, you need to also have a So with this, this is my Paystack account. So for you to be able to uh, use a Paystack account uh, or feature in your project or website or web application, you uh, you will need it to be on a live uh, mode. And for Paystack to activate your account, to be able to use live mode, they will they require some documents like your CSC, company registration, uh, company account, and so many stuff like that. So when I was building uh, most of my application, I found the need for it, so I had to create one. I registered a, uh, a company and uh, 
I'm currently using it for my most of my application, both for testing and for real. So I wouldn't run into the problem of uh, not being able to test or build an application because of those uh, requirements or prerequisites. So for this particular tutorial, we only need one thing, which is to go to payment page and create uh, a particular payment plan or configure it here. So for this uh, tutorial, we don't need to start dealing with API integration and stuff like that. No, uh, doing dealing with complex integration. Anybody who has little or no programming knowledge can follow through with this and integrate this particular tutorial into his or her application. So the first thing we'll do is to create a new page, and uh, you can it can be a one-time payment which whenever they go to that particular link it will be it will prompt them to make a one time payment after the payment they are not charged again it can be a subscription payment uh, a recurring payment or a concurrent payment uh, plan which they can choose and it can be a product uh, payment so i've only done this i have not tried out these two so what we are doing is for this but you can go ahead and try out these two i'm pretty sure they will be simple for the subscription payment one of my existing plan if you want to link one of your existing plan or copy what you have in one of your existing plan you can choose this if you want to create a new plan you can choose this so let's choose the second one so name of your plan we call it a uh, subscription one so and the cost we want it to charge 100 naira and the interval we want it to be daily and you set the limit of invoice that can be generated and sent if your company has a logo or banner you can add it here so this is what we appear on your page and also on the customer invoice if you want to collect phone numbers as well maybe you want to call them or tell them stuff and then you can click on this so i check it so i can be able to collect this if you also want to uh, you, if you don't want Paystack to generate a custom URL for you, so you can then add uh, maybe uh, GD. Let me add my name. Okay, this URL is available. And uh, or let me use something more. Uh, sub plan. Oh, somebody else have used it. Sub subscribe. Okay, let's use subscribe. So if you want to redirect the user to your maybe to your website after the payment or to a thank you page or whatever, you can then use this particular one. And then the short success message you want to show, you say payment subscription plan successful. Successful. So email address once in anybody pays it will notify you if you want that then you can enter your email address here and then um you can also have a what's it called name of the field if you want to collect extra information you can add uh, the field which you want to collect maybe address location whatever so you can add it and add other ones as well so with that uh this is what we have um this is what we have the name of the plan this this and also this so we create the plan so for this particular we, we are we are going to come back to copy this link later but for now let's leave this page as it is so we go over to our project and uh we want to start coding so don't forget uh make sure you import this and then another thing you, just, you need to do go to your because the web view a uh, minimum sdk is 19. i ran into that problem when i was doing this tutorial earlier so go to android folder go to app folder then you will see build.grid under your app folder open it and make sure scroll to where you have minimum sdk and change it to something equal to or greater than 19 so you can set it to 19 but i normally set mine to 21 in case i decide to maybe integrate firebase or any other uh whatever to it later so i leave it at 21 and then um the next thing i do 
is I close this and I come back to this page. So I already have it running here, but I don't want it to, I have not coded anything yet. So I just have this. So let's start up with our coding by first of all, declaring some things which we will use. So final completer web view controller and this web view controller i want to i want to create a web view controller we use later now nah, let's call it controller so i have a completer web view web view what controller and uh this is it so if you have this and you are getting an error make sure you import this async here make sure you import this async if without it you'll get tons of errors up there so the next thing we want to do is to start building our application so we don't want to uh first of all let's build another stuff which we will need which is a uh, something that will be processing our javascript we know that we are going to need a javascript uh, to process payments so to enable it in our in our app so we say build uh, contest call it contest so it will take the current screen contest and pass it to this guy so we need to add a return statement for that error to go away so we say JavaScript channel and then what do we want to do inside JavaScript channel we should come with a name which we can call uh, toaster because we want to make it toast and another thing is uh, a message received so when it processes a Java request JavaScript request it has to return something a message if there is an error if it was successful so it has to return and when it returns it, what do we want to do with it? So we want to just display the message that it brought back dot of contest and then dot uh, show snack comment. Show what? Show snack bar. And the snack bar we want to use is uh I want to define the snack bar in here and then the content of the snack bar is uh, a test and the test is uh, the message for the test is message dot message message dot message is supposed to work so what did I do wrong okay javascript so it should be message not channel okay message dot message javascript message okay okay it's okay now so make sure you get it right most times uh it's it's a little bit confusing so um we've done this and we've also defined this up here so we are ready to start building our payment page so for this we go over to our scaffold and uh after our app bar we'll have the body so what do you have, want to have in the body we have a container a container we have a height and the height we say media query why do we want to use media query we want to get for every screen we want to get the height and the width of that screen and assign it as the height of our container dot size dot what dot height so uh if we don't do that our widget might be appearing small or big and my overflow in some certain screens so we just calculate the size of the screen by doing this and then oh sorry it should be this. 
and assign it to this. So if you are using get x, this becomes more easier for you. You can check out the package in uh, pub.dev builder and uh, want to build contest and then contest. So what do we want to do? We want to do um, what do we want to return? We want to return uh, a web view, this widget called web view. So we close it up and uh, we start building our web view. So the initial URL, initial URL, undo. So now we are ready to copy this guy. So we copy this link, go back to our this and add it here so it can load this payment page for us so we say javascript mode we want it to be unrestricted so it can process any javascript uh, javascript mode dot uh, unrestricted and then the next thing we want to do is uh, when our web view is created what do we want to do we want to assign it to a controller web view controller and then we we'll have a web view controller and then uh, we assign it to remember this controller we created up here this is it here so we want to assign it to this controller dot complete web controller so other things like this everything should work but uh, let's say we want to add uh, some stuff to it like uh, on progress when it's progressing we want to get uh, the percentage of what has been loaded maybe we want to add a progress bar but we are not going to add a progress bar rather we will print the progress so we say progress equals to progress and then percentage of the progress so another thing which we want to add is the javascript channel um let's say it's not necessary but you can still add it uh, javascript channel you remember this javascript that we created below the channel we created below to get information about all the javascript that is being processed if it's an error, if it's a success message, it will display it for us. So we say to star and then we assign the current contest to it. So this is all we need to do. Uh, we still have other ones, but those ones I can leave it to you to do. We we'll say navigation delegate. If maybe the first URL is not going, you can uh, do another URL. Or tell it where else to go redirection URL we also have a uh, on page finish when the page finishes what do you want to do do you want to show a pop-up message or maybe redirect or whatever we also have on start what do you want to do do you want to show the progress dialog uh, just to show the progress by dialog first and when it finishes you now show the page and stuff like that so you can experiment with that but for now this is all that we need to do for now so i go over to my uh, where's my run oh this is it here so um i'm trying to hot reload and uh it's not hot reloading so i'll try to hot restart And let's see what we have here. So it's running. Now you can see at some point it will show you the percentage of what has been loaded. And there you go. This is our payment page. This is our payment page within our application. So we don't need to navigate outside of the app and come back. You can see progress it's at 100 now that's when it showed 100 and uh, at some point it will show you 20 something let's see 
okay this was when it was on 21 70 and the rest so this is what we have so let's say i impute my name chidiabere oh let's say i put this um let's say and then uh i put this i put gd at g.com and uh i put a phone number uh, let me just put a random phone number and then i say so if we didn't add the javascript stuff it wouldn't show this processing so it's it will show processing 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 and uh, it's going to come up with uh something for us okay so it now shows us where we need to put our card so what it did actually before was to register us register our name our email address and phone number and that can be found uh okay it can be found under subscribers this way it added it and uh right now it brought us here so right here you can put in your card and the information which i'm not going to do for payment for security reasons and then click on pay and then it will show you a success message everything was set before so this is exactly how to do this you can try to experiment with uh, this as well can work if we try to visit it uh, do it on our browser it will work same way everything so instead of going through the uh, rigor of uh, adding api integration stuff like that and getting error coming back to do that you can easily do this and it makes life easier and simple for you we can as well test other other uh, stuffs like uh let's say we go to waste payment page uh, payment page okay let's see what this is when we set what we need what we normally see and then let's see what happens uh when other users when you set let customer choose their plan so it will allow the customer to choose whatever they want so i can just uh, put uh costs and this 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 let's just create and then let's go to the page and see what it is so you see it adds amount it adds the interval it asks for how long you want to be charged if it's 30 days if it's uh two months three months you allow the customer to set it by themselves and subscribe to your particular plan so this is where i will be stopping for this tutorial thank you keep on watching most of my tutorials you can check out my ride sharing application uh, tutorial, which is an ongoing project which I'm working on together with uh, some other participants online. You can as well check out uh, the Firebase mobile authentication, dynamic linking, uh, Firestore, entering data, updating data, reading and writing and stuff like that, Firestore rules and how to set them, how to manipulate it, and so many other cool stuff on Firebase, Flutter, and anything flutter at all so uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to my video it's a source of encouragement for me to keep on doing what i love doing thank you